Hello, and welcome back to Dumb Thumbs FPB. So today's video is to talk about these. These, this here is a toothpick. Well, yeah, not really, not really. Sorry, these have been around for a long time. Actually, most people don't realize it, but this is my first one from three years ago. I mean, we had a ton of these things. This is not a toothpick, and I'll tell you why, guys. A toothpick originally was supposed to be a whole other subclass of quadcopter. Basically, what it was is you took a whoop, you took the hoops off, you put two-inch props on, boom, you got a toothpick. That was the whole intention. The whole intention was something that weighed 45 grams and below in dry weight. That was the whole idea. These are not toothpicks. I mean, we've had these things around for a very, very long time, like I pointed out. So, I mean, how can you sit there and call these a new classic quadcopter a toothpick when they've been around? So, here's the thing, guys. Um, what I'm trying to do today is I'm going to build a top-mounted, or my goal is to build a top-mounted um, twig or toothpick. Hopefully, it's a toothpick, but maybe it'll be end up being a twig. Um, and the reason why I want a top mount is because I'm sick and tired of this. This is a brand spanking new battery. Um, first flight out there, it was underneath of the full speed toothpick here. I ended up hitting the tree and it crushed the damn battery. And I was just like, you got to be kidding me. So I want that top mounted battery. I want my batteries to be protected. Okay. So that's the whole idea. Well, obviously, whoops don't come with a top mounted battery. So therefore, toothpicks didn't come with a top-mounted battery. So what I want to do is create one that is 45 grams. That's the goal or below. And if you think about it, guys, this, is a, this right here came in around 55 grams. This one here is at 55 grams. And the difference between 55 grams and 45 grams is 20% weight dif difference. Okay? So, I mean, it's a lot less weight to be, you know, for these little tiny low-torque motors and these little tiny bendable props um, to have to haul around. And I want that power to weight ratio too. I want that, my magic number is six to one power weight ratio, but I, I would be happy with a five to one, not a three to one or 3.5 to one, maybe even a, I doubt it's even a four. But yeah, I, I don't want that sluggish performance. This is a great beginner quad, by the way. And I know everybody's experience is a little bit different, but to me, it's a beginner quad. Some people are saying, oh, this thing really this thing really books and so on and so forth. I don't think so. I think it's just sluggish. This thing is faster. This has 11,000 kV motors on it. And for 2S, this thing actually hauls ass. On 3S, it does really well as well, as you can see in my video that I had. So here's what we got here, guys. Um, These are the frames that I chose. This here I was really excited about. This is Tomo Quads. This is their brand new frame that they got out. And this is really, really cool. I'm going to put a picture up here of what it looks like when it's all together. This, this little baby right here looks great. And hopefully it is great. They say it's supposed to be 16 grams fully put together. Uh, I don't know. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of printed parts here. In fact, they even have protectors for the ends of the arms. And, you know, so that's just extra weight there. I don't know. We'll find out because I'm going to weigh this up. This here is the GEP RC Phantom, and this is everything you get in the kit right here. And they claim that this was 16 grams, but actually it's, it's about 20 grams total. Whatever one is lighter is the one that's going to win the day. I do like this battery strap, believe it or not. This is one of those chintzy battery slap straps. I, I got one of these things, a gray one that came with the toothpick from Full Speed, and it never worked. This thing here is tough as nails. So I'm going to use this. Um, I was trying to find the battery straps that came stock with the Emacs Freestyle because they have the little plastic, and they're lightweight, and they have a little plastic buckle here, and they actually work great, but I could not find these. So I went out and I bought these. These are made by iFlight, but they got the metal buckle on there. They actually weigh more. In fact, they weigh a lot more than just this. So I'm going to try this one out for this particular build, but I got these for backup just in case it doesn't work. Um... So everything loaded up here is, is supposed to be 20 grams, or it's supposed to be 16 grams. It's actually 20. One of the reasons why is they use these metal standoffs, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, these are the same standoffs they've been using forever. I mean, this thing is old. This thing's like, what, two years old? And you can see, wow, there's a difference there in there. So they seem to like to use this bling, you know, to kind of catch your eye. Look, guys, we're not we're not looking at these things in the air. We're looking in our goggles. We don't care what our quad gopper looks like. We care how they perform. So these are out. I'm going to replace those with 
uh, aluminum screws and some plastic tubing around the screws so it hold the plate, the bottom plate from the top plate. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here if I choose this frame based on weight. This one here, I'm going to leave off a lot of the printed parts because it's based on weight. So here's the FC here. So I got two to choose from. I got the beta one here, as you've seen. Uh, this is the new 12 amper. This say, they say this weighs 6 point some grams. We'll find out. We're going to weigh that. And this here is the nameless RC. This is the 412T. This, they say that this, without the pins and all that crap, weighs like uh, 4 point some grams. So we're going to find out. Whichever one weighs less is the one I'm going to use. Also, too, uh, these are the little capacitors. So these little capacitors right here, boom, right there, is what comes stock with the Emacs um, Freestyle. And I like them. They actually work. So I'm going to be using one of these. This is, of course, your RX, which we are very accustomed to. Now, these are the motors that I chose. Okay, so these motors are 11,000 kV motors because I, I plan on just running 2S. And these are the 1103, 11,000 kV motors. And these are made by Skystars. I think they're iFlight, but whatever. They're very, very light. We'll weigh those. And also the VTX. So now here's the story about the VTX, guys. I already bought a bunch of uh, TBS uh, Unified Nanos, so that's what I'm going to use. In hindsight, honestly, I wish I would have uh, bought the e the Eosheen uh, little BTX, little Nano BTX, because same amount of performance, half the price. Um, so here's the antenna I'm going to use. I it's just a standard dipole. I know I'm going to lose three dB gain uh, by using this antenna, but with 400 milliwatts available, I'm not overly concerned. Okay. Um, and then the most controversial part of them all. So this one here, I know it's probably going to generate some hate or some downvotes. This is the camera I'm going to use. And the reason, this is the stock camera that came from the Emacs uh, Freestyle. The reason I'm going to use this is simple. When During my review of the, of the Freestyle, I found that this camera was acceptable. It wasn't great, but it wasn't horrible. And so I'm going to try this one out because it hardly weighs anything. In fact, I'll weigh it and I'll show you. It hardly weighs anything. And this is this build is all about weight. I want to get down to the toothpick, not twig. All right, guys. So we're back here with the slingshot. It's all built. Um, I just finished up with it. And I hooked it to Betaflight, put the modes in there, got everything in Betaflight done. Um, this thing during the build, during the build, it, I weighed it. I weighed every single component and every single wire on here. Fifty ways of Sunday. I want that goal of forty-five grams. That's my goal for this thing. And you know, you know, one of the problems, one of the th reasons why I kind of struggle is because I wanted to keep this piece right here. Okay, this is what the original designer had in mind, and I wanted to keep it. That's what makes it, a, you know, a slingshot. So. I wanted to keep the antenna tubes and I also wanted to keep the TPU camera mount. Now, the thing about the camera mount is it, nor it normally is 20, mil 20 millimeters tall and I shaved it down to 13 millimeters and that took this the weight of this thing from 3.4 grams down to 1.9 grams. And I also shaved a little bit of weight inside here for where a normal camera, because I'm using the, the um, the uh, FR, or the, I'm sorry, the Emacs free style camera. I'm not using a typical camera, so I shaved off the extra inside here, um, and and that's what took this thing down. It, it, the other added benefit too is because now the battery is closer to the prop line, so it's going to be a little bit more balanced. With you have weight down below the prop line, and now you have the battery above the prop line, and also the top plates, uh, and a little bit of the antenna tubes, and so on and so forth. I think it's going to be a lot better center of gravity going this way, you know, for your rolls. Um, so that's an added benefit there. Um, so I haven't weighed it yet. I'm hoping, God, I'm really hoping. I mean, without the TPU mount, it would have been around 42 grams. So I'm hoping I'm right in there. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. Ha! Can't get any closer than that. It's 44.9 grams. Okay, so here's the flight video right here. Um, so you can see it's 82 degrees. The wind is 21 miles an hour and 26 mile an hour gusts. It's been like this all week, guys. Um, I wanted to get this video done quite a few days ago. And you can see the grass right here is just blowing. That's the grass. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's really bad wind. It's been like this all week. And... I finally just threw caution to the wind. I said, you know what? I, I got to get this thing done. I got stuff on the bench. I got some stuff that uh, 
Banggood sent me. I got to get done. Um, so it was hell to tune this thing. I'm not used to tuning Betaflight uh, 4.0 anyway. I don't think anybody really is. Um, and it took about 40 flights because I had to wait for the wind to calm down in order to tune it. And the tune that I came up with is really different than the one you find on the Betaflight site that's recommended for quads of this size and the motors. Um, and you'll see that because I'll do the I'll, I'll put the CLI dump down below and you can see how squirrely this thing is as far as the tune goes. But it works. The motors are not hot even though my D gains are up, I think on roll pretty damn high. It just seems to work. Um, and I that's all that's important, right? I mean, I did end up with a couple of flyaways today. Like when you hit the arm switch and you're in air mode, it just took off on me. So I had to kill it midair and let it just plop into the ground. By that time, it was already like 30, 40 feet in the air. So I can tell you that this frame is durable because it literally crashed. There's a concrete pad that is um, over there on the left by the Jeep. And it just right into that pad because I had to shut it down because of the flyaway and nothing got broke. The only thing I did today is I lost a prop and I bent the tip of a prop. That's it. Um, the tree I'm just passing by on the left-hand side right there, the wind literally blew me into that tree. And right about here, the wind is trying to blow me into those trees. Um, I, I did the best I could here, guys, just to kind of show you the power of this thing. It does have great power. It's got great top end with the HQ props. Um, it's got a lot of a lot of control. Um, it's not super, you know, like when you when you first do the Beta Flight 4.0, it's it's kind of like razor edge because it's made for racing until you start really playing around with the free the feed forward and all that. But it's it's got a little bit of that. I mean, it, it goes where you want it to go. It's not super lazy, but it's not super tight either. It's it's a little gooey. Um, once again, I'm trying to go down through here, and it's just push the wind on the ground right there is just pushing me every which direction. So um, the batteries are really, really saggy. These are my old batteries. These are the uh, even my GNB 350s, but these this one I think is the Beta FPV 350s. They have hundreds of flights on them, and they're not really that great a battery to begin with. And so you can see they sag i mean every time i do a punch out i mean they really really sag so you know the new gnb 450s i got i put on this which all up weight was like 75 grams they perf it perform they performed really well but i only got one chance to use them and i got it like half a flight and then the wind pushed me into that big tree right there i'm about to head towards and um i ended up stuck in that tree for about a half an hour trying to get it out with a big stick i literally had to park the jeep underneath the tree and then a big had a big stick in my hand to even get out of there so that's the video guys i hope you enjoyed what i could put together here if you did give me a thumbs up and please subscribe i got some other videos coming this week so have a great night thank you